we are excited. Welcome to John Kane Arena. The Crosstown rivals finally get to play in front of a home crowd, the Melbourne Vixens and the Collingwood Magpies. I'm Bianca Chatfield and joining me in commentary, Caitlin Thwaite and Shani Norder. The Vixens have got the slight edge with seven wins and Magpies have got four wins. But Bianca, last year there was two wins for the Magpies. We see the lineups here, obviously, with a couple of key outs for the Vixens. They've had to reshuffle their defensive lineup and we see uh, Shani Lambden, Ju um, Jordan Kranzberg, and Ruby Barkmeyer enter the lineup. For so the Kate Eddie's out, Hannah Mundy's out, Rani Samerson's out. The Magpies, though, they've got their full lineup. Their full lineup, they're 10, so they're not sitting nice and comfortable with all of their, um, you know, the mainstays in that starting lineup. With obviously Ash Braz, Jodie Ann Ward, and Jeeva Mentor there as their key backline. Kate Maloney, the captain, she's back. And she gets us underway. The Vixens, they want to play with speed. The Magpies, they want to slow them down. Watson to Maloney. Back to Watson. What can they do? Keep an eye on that matchup. Ash Brazel at wing defense for the Magpies. And Liz Watson at wing attack with the ball in her hands for the Vixens. Contact goal defense. And a really good patient build up there from the Vixens, obviously dealing with a lot of defensive pressure, still managing to work it through. From Wenda, she taps it to herself. Yep. The rebound stat, you spoke about that in the pregame. From Wenda can match it with the best of them. She's obviously just telling herself, calm Great, down, you missed the third. first one. <laughs> Bit of good, solid self talk yes. there. <laughs> Brown but instead of contact, to Garvin. Nelson plucks that one out of the air. Step back with the keeper. Garvin dishes it off. Nelson for her first. Vixen's back in control. Austin. Contact goal defense. Early yes. contact call against Jodie Ann Ward. Watson to Austin. You'll see that a lot today. And a second miss there for the Vixens. Five. What does a miss do to you as a shooter early in the game? Well, it depends. If you oh, huge ball. Sorry, Kate. That was enormous pass from Ash Brazel. Did not go close. <laughs> Um, I, I think in terms of your confidence, you're obviously wanting to get that rhythm, um, get yourself into the game. If your confidence is high, a miss early doesn't necessarily do that much to your confidence, but if you're struggling a little bit or have had an off week, it actually might, it might add that pressure. Here's our Harvey Norman replay, as Brazel, I think she thought Brown was going to be able to get that. Here we go, Magpies back into attack, Brown. Lewis keeps it in. Garvin back to Brown. Couple of loose balls early, and we expected this from the um, from that rivalry. Obviously, a lot of feeling involved. The clear heads not quite coming to play initially. What a rebound! <laughs> Falling out of court, she gets her first. Vixens back in possession. Weston trying to find somewhere to go. The white of the Magpies is filling that, is that middle channel. Attack. Maloney finds Kumwenda. Across court. And a strong drive. A be beautiful cut and drive just across the circle there. Time. Finding that space. Shani Norda, we're just going to go across to you about the Magpies defence. They've started heated today, ladies. Um, I'm really loving the intensity. I think what they're doing is they're pushing the Vixens up high, but they're also dropping back because there's not a tall shooter and they're not too worried about high hands. And they just seem to have a but much higher intensity, even in attack at the moment, um, than what they have in previous games. So very impressive so far. Intensity, there's a lot of heat in this game. And the Magpies have started off well. Another uncharacteristic miss there early on from right under the post. I just didn't see them. They started off well and the scores are even. Watson, centre pass received. Another one to her name. She gets it again. Austin to the middle. They put it over. And Can't find Kumwenda. That's that confusing the space and the connection that I was talking about in that the pregame there, Bianca. Jeeva just 
making it look like the space behind was open. Oh, as we see, a huge ball rainmaker bringing down the rain with that one. Nelson, strong take. Look at this Harvey Norman replay. Garbin puts it up. Perfect pass. Not so much that one, though. No. Missed the mark. Garbin just over the baseline. Lewis to take it in for the Vixens. Contact wing defend. An early call here, Joe Weston. Contact call wing against her. Forward. It's unusual for Joe Weston to be playing against a player moving, like a Kelsey Contact Brown. The speed and the height of Brown would make it very hard for Weston. Very hard for Weston, but on the flip side of that, also a huge um, big hands out in front of um, Kelsey Brown. So it might attack. Um, yes. just disrupt the 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 vision of Kelsey that being able to look in because she has been turning and giving that, that ball straight center. into the feeders straight away. A couple more just loose turnovers here. Waiting for one of the teams to settle and find their rhythm. Magpies leading by two. Oh, his bodies are flying. Maloney hits the ground. Austin intercept already in the first five minutes of this game. She earned herself a player of the match last week with all her intercepts as an attacker. Three intercepts from your goal attack. Yes, Not a bad effort. Yes. Maloney, what can the Vixens do? What they do well is find Kumwenda. Kumwenda puts it down for Austin. And a smart there. Kira Austin had missed that first one, just needed that one to settle for Gwenda to put that down and allow her the opportunity to do that. So that's a deliberate play, is it? Yeah. So sometimes it definitely is, yeah. Yep. Allowing your other shooter to get herself into the game, feel that rhythm, because you want both of your shooters firing. Vixens through Austin. She looks long, she's got to go back. We see the shooting stats just on the screen there. Maloney gets back to Kumwenda. Yes. Oh, goal defense. Jovic starts us off with Garvin. They go behind. Brazel helping out in attack. Brown goes long. Double play between Jovic and Garvin. She sneaks her way closer to the post. Yeah, you're grabbing the arm. Mannix, yeah. contact call, and Nelson makes Big her turn. pay. The Magpies extend their lead out by two. Oh, oh that's a dangerous ball line. to go over the top of an Ash Braz. She loves those ones in the pocket. Contact keeper, it's inside. We were talking about Olivia Lewis, the Magpies, uh, sorry, the Vixens goalkeeper, and her vertical jump, or well, Ash Brazel. Wing defence for the Magpies. There she is on your screen. Just instructing play. Get around. Get she's, around, Jodie <laughs> She's their co-captain for the netball team. She plays AFLW as well, has put that aside this year to concentrate on hopefully a Commonwealth Games selection and playing for the Australian Diamonds. What an athlete she is. Total pens extraction. Mannix, another penalty. Brown finds Garbin around those big hands of Weston. Garvin steps it in. Makes it look so easy. Austin playing back to Maloney. Maloney, they can't go forward. Look at the white hands of the Magpies players as Jovi tries to interrupt play. Watson to Austin. Connect, can't connect with a shooter to shoot a pass. And Jeeva Mentor to put the Magpies into attack. The defensive pressure from the Magpies just seems to be that next level to the Vixens. It definitely has been. It's been really disruptive of the flow. The Vixens are very used to being able to play on that first second really fast. And so far, the Magpies have been able to hold that up really successfully down the, um, the defense end for the Magpies. Strong take from Nelson. Center pass to Magpies. 78% shooting for Shimona Nelson. Two from two for Sophie Garbin. Magpies will be very happy with that. Garbin looks straight in. Precision passing to get over the hands of Lewis. 
as we can hear, a HCF tactical timeout has been called by the Collingwood Magpies. Simone McInnes there on screen, the Vixens coach. Let's take a listen to what the Vixens have to say. We need to get work rate, give and go. And if we're one on one, then we have to be right on them out the front. Yeah, okay. Don't hit the space. Yeah. And that hard recovery to get hands over, yeah. all right? There's a couple there that we've got to touch on, so yeah. just keep back the hand cells. And if you're doubling back, keep up. Strong, definite beast. Strong, definite heart. Yeah. Intensity from when we go out, hard one on one, hands over. And in attack, they're doubling on the driver. We should have someone free. Let's be smart. Take the drives, let it go. Vix on three. One, two, three, Vix. Vixens, they want one on one defense, they want more pressure. Let's go to Shani Norda. What do the Magpies want to do? They just want a little bit more movement in the circle. So Nicole Richardson has asked Sophie Garvin to use her in and outs with Kelsey Brown. So they want Kelsey on the circle edge, ready to pass it back so that they have the option of both shooters, not just Shimona Nelson. Great job, Shans. Western to Maddox, the two defenders. They're trying to make a play and attack. Yes, yes, sir. And Jodie Ann Ward and Kira Austin having a great battle to begin with. We heard Simone McInnes ask Kipper, you need to be strong, you need to be going strong. Maddox, she gets that one. Maloney, back to Weston. Jodie flies through. Too late, she's out of play. The Magpies. They're trying to put the pressure on. But she had possession of it. It was on the ball. A penalty. There's a lot of penalties already in this game. There is, and that's something that they're obviously both still finding that rhythm of the game. Figuring out the umpires, figuring out what they're going to call, what where they need to adjust. Like. See Mannix just waiting patiently for that ball to center. slip through Garvin's hands. Maloney to Austin. Rolls off, finds defense. herself in the pocket. Possession. Possession with the centre. Possession with the centre. Maloney, I think, lucky to come up with that one. As Mentor gets a hand to it, Vixen Zoe, three on one, driving, diving for that ball. And you can hear the siren now. We are in power five. If the team shoot in the Sudcorp super shot range, then. It's all worth two, just in this last five minutes and for the last five minutes of every quarter. Brazzle, straight across the court to Brown. She lifts it high. Bounce pass to bounce pass. Garvin to Nelson. Nelson back out. Garvin in front position. She's steady. She steps in. They're making it look easy, the Magpies, in attack. So they lead now by three. Across to Brazil, she keeps it in. Extraction wing attack. And if we look at our missing net points here, Shimona Nelson leading the way with 15. Yep, and Lizzie Watson, the only one there in that top four for the for the Vixens. Magpies having it their way at the moment. Watson tries to give it straight to Austin. Another penalty against Jodie Ann Ward. I think Nicole Richardson would be keeping an eye on her penalty count. Kawenda, she, she took the risk, didn't pay off. Jovic to Brazzle. Brazzle is the engine room of this defence end. She's trying to help in attack. And we saw Braz just then, she pointed, she needed to get into that middle third to unlock the, the pass that can go into that attack third. She's still got her feet in that goal third, then she can't launch that long one, which we've seen them do already a couple of times. Shooting statistics for the Magpies. You'd be happy with that as a shooter, wouldn't you, Katie? Yes, I definitely <laughs> would, 100%, and rocking. sitting on nine out of 10, it's not too bad. Austin for two. 
She shot three of them last week, and now her first Suncorp super shot for today's game. Garvin out to Jovic. Nelson's got her hand up. She's being double played. Garvin swoops around. It's a move we've become very familiar with with Sophie Garvin. And it's great to see. I think she's really found that balance and the role that she needs to play within this Magpies lineup. Initially, I think she was getting caught into being that third feeder and not necessarily putting the volume up there herself, which if she's a threat in the circle, she pulls a defender off Nelson. Just over two minutes to play. From Wenda, happy with one. The Magpies leading by two in this first quarter. Ward to Brown. Brown sitting up high for a wing attack. She takes the long drive to break open defense, the Vixen. Mannix goes flying. Causing wing defence. And Jovi comes up with it on the edge of the circle thanks to a contact call. That super, super speedy uh, mid-court of Jovi and Brown. Watson to Maloney. They try and go back and forth to each other. Ward penalised again. Easy pass across to Kumwenda. <laughs> if you look at the penalties too on the screen, it was 17 to Magpies, 15 to the Vixens. We know the Vixens, they're known for being a very penalised team. There's a fine line, isn't it, between contesting the ball and not contesting. Yeah, there definitely is. And I think that they should be figure, figuring out where that line is. And Garvin wants to, keeping themselves in play. Why wouldn't you want to when you do it so easily? Magpies extend their lead to four. We've got just over 50 seconds to play. Kumwenda, she wants to go. What can she do? Double defended. Sneaks it to Austin for one. Brown to Ward, back to Brown. Brown's trying to make a play. Jovi straight through the middle. There's that breaker. Beautiful drive up the middle. Jovi trying to see over Maloney. Garvin again. Down here in the one. In the one. Just giving her a second. Come forward, players. Come it's forward. Shot at yeah. that one. You can hear the umpire saying it's, it's in the one. It's hard. not back in the Suncorp. Super yeah. shot arc. Maloney plays us off quickly, straight up to Kumwenda. We've got three seconds. She falls short. Great rebounding positioning from Mentor. And what a start to this game it has been. The Vixens, they trail the Magpies by four goals. Well, that's a quarter time chat. Thanks to Origin Energy. Welcome back to Fox Netball. That's been our first quarter. Caitlin Thwaites, that's really interesting insight from the Magpies. The Vixens' hands are causing havoc. Exactly what we thought with that matchup with Joe Weston on the much shorter Kelsey Brown that they are not quite able to see. So having a good angle so that the person running behind is not quite running or they're able to be seen. Shams, what did you hear? And the Vixen said just around that that they need to watch those bounce passes because that's what Kelsey Brown and Jovic love. Just those quick little passes in between. Attacking wise, Simone asked oh, Kira Austin to take that drive. To be honest, I probably wouldn't want to drive into a circle with Jeeva Mentor either. But <laughs> they just asked her to go hard because if they start drawing their uh, players with them, they're not going to be able to come off and take those intercepts. We can see you on screen there, Charles, and I feel like you're about to run out there on the court. You, <laughs> with all that enthusiasm, I'm loving it. Oh, my God, every time. It's just such an intense game. <laughs> Let's see what happens in this second quarter. You heard it. The Vixens' hands over. They're causing havoc. The Magpies, the bounce passes. The Vixens want to keep an eye on them. Austin for one. Shooter to shooter. That is a tough thing for defenders to get in the way of. The Vixens get back one. Center contact. And they're back in control. Weston to Maloney. Kumwenda steps in, tries the layup. Oh, tries the layup and gets the attacking contact there. She's been watching the Queensland Firebirds. Wallam and Buetta, we see that a lot from those shooters. 
We definitely do. Brown just snuck to get that in the centre third. Brazzle. To Ward, to Jovic. There's that bounce pass, Jovic and Brown. Weston with her hands, the big hands. See, just blocking that vision. Just offside call from Weston. Garvin, she's short, but she rebounds. As in short high goal, high not short in height. I was going to say, she's not that short, is she? Me? Watches Harvey Norman replay as Kumwenda. Jodie Ann Ward got her hand on the ball there. Contact what an contact. effort. That is for contact. all the juniors watching at home, the fact that Jodie Ann Ward had her hands in the air already in that position Dixons. and Kumwenda came into her space, that's how that's a contact on the attacker. A win for the Magpies. Brazzle with the ball in hand. Ward to Garvin, they look in. Can they get it to Nelson? That is contact centre. Jovic goes under, back and up and over to Garvin. Magpies. Just a nice easy one. After that first quarter there, Bianca, Vixen's sitting at 60% conversion rate for their um, centre passes. Magpies sitting up at about 80, so... We just saw the turnover from the Magpies heading down there. That was from the Vixen centre pass. It's something they're going to have to address. We have spoken about that in previous games, haven't we? The intensity of how important that goal um, centre pass to goal ratio is. Nelson trying to keep that one, keep that one in, but it went off the back of her leg. Lewis to Weston. Weston tries to go long. What can she find? All the Vixens defenders all on one side of the court. Maloney to Watson, they're all there. I think that's something that um, the Vixens are probably trying to find at the moment. Kate Eddy, who's obviously sitting at home on the, on the couch with COVID protocols, um, but she does a mountain of work for the Vixens in attack. And so without her out there on court, just the Vixens struggling. Oh, we've got bodies flying everywhere. Brown and Weston got tangled up. We've got the goal defense. Oh, Emily fine. Mannix, have them up, please? a contact call against her as the court that gets mopped up. It's the pressure, too, that the Magpies are applying on the Vixens as they're coming out. You know, we often say that the pressure has to be applied early, and they're doing that. The attack end for the Magpies are putting it on. And, and then the scoreboard pressure also comes into it, too, doesn't it, B? We see the 20, 21 to 14. And we see Maloney just signal to the umpire. She wants a HCF timeout. And as we see the Vixens and the Magpies, they're going to get together, they're going to chat about what needs to change or what's working well. Maloney's already in there. And we're going to sneak our microphone over the top. Oh, that was very quick, short and sharp. Now Simone McKinnis, the coach, she doesn't look happy. Let's hear what she's got to say. We've got some good ball, then. We've got some good ball right for the work, though. We've got to do the work to make a play to back that ball down the other end. So we've got to let's centre up and work off each other more through that court that we've got dynamic options coming through and someone punching. It's not good enough. If we want, if we want to get ourselves back in there, and we are in this game, yeah. but you have to be prepared to work Let's go, Vixen. And do the work out there for it. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. We're killing ourselves out there, okay? We're getting the ball. We have the discipline to work the circle edge. We have the discipline to drive and try it again. Hey, we pull this back here. Let's go. Big stop three. One, two, three, two. Go. Expectations are high in the Melbourne Vixens camp. Do you, do you like what they were saying out there? They yeah. really are pushing themselves. Yeah. And, and Simone was um, saying they need to centre up. We, we mentioned in that last couple of plays getting caught all on the one side of the court. If they centre up, it means that it splits the defenders and they have to defend the whole court. If they're all caught on one side, then the defenders can keep them there. And Maloney, hands with the ball now. She said, we're killing ourselves out there. Shani Norda, what's happening with the Magpies? Look, they're really happy with how they're playing at the moment. Nicole Richardson's been saying isolate is working well for us in defence. Look, I'm not really sure what that means, but what I'm assuming <laughs> is that they're leaving a player 
Both and out. doubling up on someone else to make them look free and hoping they drive through to get the intercept. So that's what I'm seeing from that, but really happy at the moment, but they need to make sure they keep this intensity high because you can't drop off. We've seen so many games this year where teams have gone in ahead at half time and the other team that's down has come out a different team. So we'll just have to keep our eye on that one. And we will keep our eye on this, as we will with this one. Lewis gets a deflection, Mannix picks it up. Weston to Austin. On one side of the court, they try and open it up. <laughs> there we go, centering up with Lizzie Watson at the top there. Austin, penalty shot, but she flicks it over to Kumwenda. Much better play from the Melbourne Vixens. Does Simone McInnes have a smile on her face yet? Does she ever be? <laughs> the no we mask are. now, you can get to see her real. She Funny demands excellence from her players. She sure does, Send as we both know. Where you are when you're Watson to Austin, double plays with Maloney. <laughs> Still no smile. <laughs> the Not crowd quite. though, the crowd is smiling. They are loving this contest. Weston gets a hand to it on the centre pass. Vixen's back in control. Mannix can't go forward, goes to the side. Lateral passes for the Vixens, but Austin finds a way. Cross court to Maloney. The last three for the Vixens in a row. What can they do with it? Kumwenda just popping through the middle of those two defenders. The safe hands of Maui Kumwenda. And you can feel the momentum changing, and that is exactly why the Magpies have called a HCF tactical timeout. Kelsey Brown, she called it. She wants to halt the Vixens' momentum in that. Let's take a listen into the Magpies. Sophie Garbin just taking a breather. And we know Gabby Sinclair, she can have an impact, especially in the power five. The Magpies, they didn't shoot any super shots last game. None to their, but they still got that win over the Firebirds. They didn't need it. No, that's the thing in terms of the strategy. If you've, if you've got the lead and you've got it early, there's no need. Yeah. Shooter to shooter. Kumwenda in an easy zone and range for her. Shani, what was going on with the Vixens? If there is anyone I love seeing pumped up, it is Simone McKinnis, because she's always so steely faced, but she went in there fist pumping. Kate Maloney was fist pumping when they called that timeout, and the one thing Simone after them was to lift their work rate and that's what they've done they're getting hands on ball they're turning it over and that's exactly what they asked and shani's always fist pumping as well <laughs> it's something that's going on over on that sideline austin <laughs> the vixens they get within two jovi to sinclair lifts it straight to nelson beautiful connection there the Vixens didn't even have time to set up. No, when, when you move the ball that quickly, it is so hard as a defence. We talk about um, getting in chase mode as a defender. And if the ball is going moving that quickly, there's nothing you can do. You can't sort of 
heard that the attack is where you want them to go, you're literally just chasing. So. Yeah. And it's not a good position to be in, that's Bunny for sure. Maloney straight over the top. Jovi to Brazel. They try and get underway quickly. Exactly what Katie was saying. Don't let the Vixens get time to set up. Quick ball movement. Sinclair for her first. The hell ball. Lewis had all the pressure over the shot. And a quick tip and chase from the Vixens. Nearly threw it away. Brown gets in there. And Jovic first to it on the running race. The work rate from Kelsey Brown has been so impressive. She has been a standout for the Magpies this season. Yes, and you can see she's that real general. She's pointing, she's directing play. Okay. She's saying go back on the centre pass. She's telling the other one to do things. She's really running the show in that Magpies attack end. And no surprises when we look at the circle feeds. Watson leading the way for the Vixens. Brown of course, leading the way for the Magpies. And those two sitting at number two and three in the league for goal assists, for feeds. Um, so it's really a battle of the wing attacks there, isn't it? <laughs> with Lizzie Watson and Kelsey Brown. And here's Jackie Newton with a goal defence position. She's off the court at the moment, but she's getting ready to come on. There will be a change for the Magpies soon. Kamwenda gets nearly gets two hands on it. Mentor. The experienced yeah. English Roses campaigner. Ward to Brown. What magic can Brown weave? To Brazel. They try and go middle channel. See more of those bounce passes through that midcourt. Sinclair for her first. As Jackie Newton has entered the game, Jodie Ann Ward takes a rest. Newton adds a whole lot more height. She does, and her and Jodie Ann Ward yeah. have actually been fairly even in terms of their impact. They've got similar amount of... So we see another attacking contact there from Kumwenda. And Newton obviously was out last week, just had a little bit of an injury to the eye. So great to see that she's back out there today. Sinclair to Jovic. Another bounce pass across the court. Keep in mind, it's a tall Vixen's defence end, so the bounce pass means it's a lot harder for them to get their hands to. I was going to say, just looking at the, the height mismatch, get the Vixen's in the air and go underneath them. Nelson, or over the top of them. Over the top, <laughs> just like that. She's showing them how to do it. The Magpies extend their lead to four. Jovic, we saw her have an excellent game against the Firebirds. Player of the match, and here she is leading the Nissan net points. And Kelsey Brown not far behind her. Sinclair to Nelson. Can't pull it in. The Vixens back into attack. And a much better transition from the Vixens there. Just getting through that mess, not allowing the Collingwood defence to set up. Just over four minutes to play. We're in the power five. Kamwenda. Misses the easy, gets the rebound. Do the Vixens start taking Suncorp super shots or is it too early? But it's contact on a fair. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, Maloney needs backup. Mannix is there. Centre contact. Austin, here we go. Doesn't want to take it. No, it works to better position. Works it around again. Might have a look at this one. Lean over the ball oh, from Jeeva yeah. Mentor and she gets a hand to it. You don't often see that from a defender that or they get a hand to it on a lean. It's excellent balance from Mentor. She's an experienced Center campaigner. Contact. Maloney out of play, so Jovic is free. She's roaming, takes it just on the sideline. Across to Brown. Sinclair. Can't get the two. Nelson, handy rebound but under the post. Great strong rebound. Just under three minutes to play in this second quarter. Brown, free pass. You can almost see that as a set play there, Bianca. Ash Brazel coming through the back. Kelsey Brown sitting off the line initially and wanting to go for that second phase play. 
Sinclair with her first Suncorp super shot for the game. <laughs> She's been, inside. I would imagine, straight into this power five to have the impact like that. Austin opts for a one to Comwenda. There's a lot more calmness about this game. You can really feel that it's more of a strategic play than it is a high intensity. Definitely is. Nelson, 17 from 19, 89%. Watson. To Austin, here she goes. Oh, and it sneaks through. Just keeps them in touch with a minute and a half to play here. Two Suncorp super shots for Kira Austin. As you can see her stats there on screen. Oh, Olivia Lewis tries it through the legs. <laughs> it's showtime here at John Kane Arena. Sinclair to Nelson. They're happy with one. Let's look at this as Lewis gets it through her legs, tries to flick it back. And Mentor comes out. She wants it. Bit of the action. Quick one, two. Mentor, Brazel, Sinclair to Nelson. Great ball. And that is a strong take from Shimona Nelson. A strong take. And Olivia Lewis could see the attack that was coming from Kelsey Brown into that pocket. She had a little look at it, knew the ball was going to come back into the post and got up for a great contest. Huge ball again. Sinclair to Nelson. That connection is building. It's getting stronger. The Magpies extend their lead out by seven. Watson to Austin. Just under 30 seconds in this second quarter. Maloney, Brazel goes flying. Watson falls safely in her hands. What can Austin do? Just that. Drains another one. Another Suncorp super shot for Kira Austin. Brown. They know the time is short. They know there's limited to come. Here we go, Sinclair. Oh. Right on the buzzer. The Magpies can't get that one. But they lead this game by five goals. Incredible performance from the Magpies. You must be impressed with how they've been playing, Katie. They're, they're clear that they're all on the same page, aren't they? We didn't necessarily see that at the start of the season, but they are gelling. They have got things humming along in the black and white. So they're doing a really great job going into the halftime break with a significant lead. Nicole Richardson, you can see her on screen there, the Magpies coach. Richo, we came up with a stat before that if the Magpies are leading at halftime, they go on to win the game. That's how it's been going this season. You must be feeling good. Stat B, but if you've put a curse on us, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now we can see Kate Upton, there, your assistant coach, she's looking at two iPads. What stats are you focusing on the most? Um, we've basically decided to uh, work in five minute blocks. So uh, we're just really seeing um, the number of five minute blocks that we can win. So we're going quite well on them at the moment. Yeah, great work, Richo. And, and we've noticed the fact that they're, the Vixens have got some really big hands out the front. Has it been a strategy for you? There's been so many bounce passes. Has it been a strategy for you to be going underneath the Vixens? I actually just spoke to them about that at half time. So if it's short, we need short bounce passes, but they're doing a good job with high hands over. We just got to make sure we hold off our timing. I can't hear a bloody thing. <laughs> and defensively, we also heard that you, you're doing a bit of an isolate there. So can you take us through what, what does isolate mean? Basically, we're just leaving the ball carrier to get more defensive bodies back behind the ball. Um, so we'll see how that goes this half as well. Well, we're going to keep an eye on that. And all the best, Richard. I hope I haven't cursed you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Vixens, they get underway with the centre pass. Watson to Weston. Maloney finds Austin. There's not many thing, not many opportunities for the Vixens to move forward. They are very patient, disciplined, very calculated with their attack though. We know that, we saw that last week from them. There's a double defense from the Magpies. Brown to Jovic. Brazel to Jovic. Look at the play, the intensity, the speed. 
and the accuracy in finding Nelson. And she is traveling along very nicely, isn't she? Sitting at 91%. Jovic, another bounce pass. Sinclair still on the court in goal attack. Garben, what a player to have sitting on the bench. Nelson seems to be doing it easy. As we see with the Vixens, they've had a change into their defensive lineup. Joe Weston across to goal defense. Shani Lambda, you see her there with her hands, with her ball in hand. Yeah, Shani Lambda, she plays, she's more of a natural wing defense. Um, and she obviously can cover cover those positions in there, but she probably plays a bit more similarly to a Kate Eddy, who is obviously the, the out in that position. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes things for this Vixens defense line. Where you are. Lambden out of play. Also has a great insight, Shani Lambden, into both sides. She's come through the Victorian pathway. She's been a training partner. She's taken the court with the Magpies. She's also been, or is a training partner now for the Melbourne Vixens. You'd learn a lot, wouldn't you, from being inside the Magpies camp? Definitely, and having the exposure to those different, uh, different coaches that add different tools to your own game. Um, but also, she would know the feeling of the rivalry on this from both sides, wouldn't she be? And that's why she'd be very excited to be out there on court. Nelson places the ball on the ground, allows Sinclair to take the penalty. Oh Almost Sweet. a shot. fadeaway shot by Sinclair. <laughs> Shani Norda, what do you want to see from the Vixens? I would like to see Emily Maddox come in at goalkeeper. Oh, oh Lewis gets it back to the ball. <laughs> She's <laughs> saying, don't take me off, Shani. I know, she must have heard me. Um, but I think it was a great move putting Joe Weston into that goal defence position. I think they probably should have put her there earlier. But I'd just like to see them mix it up in that goalkeeper position, just to see, as you said, Shimona Nelson just really nailing it at the moment. So see if they can try and get off her game a little bit. Brazzle comes through for a centre pass receive, and Lewis, she gets her hands on the ball. She Leave her out there, That's right. <laughs> we see the intercepts of both teams. Vixens three, Magpies two. Now, that doesn't incorporate all games, we must add. Maloney across to Watson. Shani, what were you talking about? You really helped lift the spirit. I'd just like to make Look a comment. This. Can we just leave Olivia Lewis on the court, thanks? <laughs> Why wouldn't you when she can get her hands on ball? Clearly a commentator and not a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you were coaching, you would definitely have no voice. Weston, the Vixens, in attack. Watson, we see that body on Kira Austin again, fighting her way through. The safe hands of Kumwenda. Magpie still leading by six. A double bounce pass. <laughs> Brown eventually picks it up. Takes a penalty to Sinclair. Long shot. That's her favorite. Oh, look at that. A sneaky little hand in where Maloney didn't see that one coming from behind. She can shoot, she can defend. She's showing Kira Austin. It's not. She's not the only goal attack on the court, having an impact in defence. Jovic, the hands of the Vixens are stopping them going straight over the top, but are not stopping the Magpies from finding the bounce pass through. Brown, safe option. And easy does it from Sinclair. Have a look at the hands here of Sinclair on the Harvey Norman replay. Return the ball, thank you, players. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup between the Vixens and the Magpies. Jovic is doing a huge amount of work. Nelson gets double defended in the air. We've seen that the last couple of plays down court. Both of the defenders on back on Nelson. It almost means that the the shooting fire needs to needs to come through the other goal. Like Gabby Sinclair has picked up that shooting load the last couple of times down the court because she's had no one on her. And the, the tricky part for the Vixens is, if you pay so much attention to Nelson Sinclair, so far she's shooting at 100% from the one goal 
and one out of three from the Suncorp Super Shot. It is tricky, but sometimes it's it's also really good just to actually put that pressure on the different parts of the game. If Nelson's carrying on and she's fine, um, you know, it, it's good to shift that sometimes, make the goal attack, take the shooting load, see if she can, and then you might want to switch it back. Brown with ball in hand, also Brown leading the Nissan net points with 64, and no surprises that Molly Jovic is at 61. Brown and Jovic, that connection needs to be stopped if the Vixens are going to get themselves back in this game. Maloney tries to, she gets a deflection. Yep. Brown tries to go over, Jovic sneaks through. Put it offside for your first. Sinclair up, Deeper over. Yeah. Great performance from Shimona Nelson. She's sitting on 39 in this net points. Her shooting, 25 from 27 at 93% as Sinclair adds another one to her name. 75% for Gabby Sinclair. Kumwenda out of the circle. Has to go back to Weston. This is where Watson to Lambden. Collingwood have been doing such a great job at holding this up way, the Vixens. Way. They're really having to play it around. The Magpies with their biggest lead of the game. They're now out by nine. One over the top to bring it back to eight. To Kumwenda. Just over seven and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. Brown and Jovic have been the standouts in attack for the Magpies. Nelson, she's had a pretty handy game herself. What can the Vixens do? How can they stop this incredible attack from the Magpies? Austin. Razzle out of play. Watson gets another chance. She hammers it through to Austin. Gets it back. Safe and easy from Kumwenda. The Vixens need more. Yeah, we see Kumwenda there just at, sitting at 81%. Kira Austin. I'd like to see a little bit more volume from both of those shooters, obviously. Shimona Nelson, she has really improved every season with her strength and her take on the ball. She definitely has. And finds her place under the post all too often, doesn't she? Nicole Richardson challenged her at the start of pre-season. She has to be stronger. She has to be able to get up in the air and pull the ball in against some of the league's best defenders. And I think she's really showcasing that she's she's a lot stronger, especially in her core. And, and not getting pushed over that baseline to sometimes those pinpoint passes that are coming. See her setting up quite high here and that pass going over the top. And she shows it how it's done. She's got that strength, not falling over the sideline, being able to hold herself up nice and strong. Pinpoint accuracy from the Magpies feeders. Yes. The Vixens, what can they do? Maloney sneaks a pass through Jeeva's hands. Austin, she's in the game. She needs to shoot more. Sinclair, the Magpies in attack. Brown just looks straight in. Costly penalties from the Vixens. And the Magpies just continue on their way. Definitely do. And I wonder whether Maloney coming back from COVID, whether she's feeling that a little bit in this second half here. Seven days in isolation. She got out of her. Oh, Ward gets the intercept. But gets done for footwork. Maloney came out of her isolation on Friday, so she hasn't had a lot of chance to be out on court. She is one of the fittest That's players going attack. around, though, isn't she, Bianca? And I know that she would not have been happy sitting on the couch last week. She has played every single game for the Vixens since about 2014. So last week would have been hard for her watching on the couch certainly hard to get back into the intensity of playing at this level. But if anyone can do it, Maloney can. As Weston, as Watson puts the ball in the air, the Vixens get another chance. 
through Austin. A quick one to Maloney. She can't get it back to her. Maloney floats it over. That double defense on the two-point shot. They're obviously happy to just let the Vixens tick over the one-point score. We're in the power five. Every shot from the Suncorp Super Shot range worth two. And every successful Suncorp Super Shot. Suncorp are donating $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation. Nelson, happy with one. The Magpies leading by nine. Shani, the Vixens' defence, what do they need to do? At the moment, they're just being a bit reactive. They're waiting for Joe Vick and Brown and Sinclair to move before they start taking that lead. They need to, I know it's really hard work, but you've got to get on the body early, make them change direction, make the passes think twice about where they're going to throw the ball. At the moment, a great shot there from Kira Austin. But at the moment, they just need, they're getting that ball through too quickly. It goes one, two, and through again. So to be able to, I like that they're coming off the body here, because um, that'll make the take play second guess where they're going to throw it. But still, just a little bit easier at the moment. And one player missing, one link in Kate Eddy missing off the court has really rattled the Vixens' defence. Yeah, look, wing defences are really underrated. That is such an important position, and they might not get every intercept, but like you said earlier, Kate Eddy is such an integral part of bringing that ball down to the attack end, so the attackers are working harder than what they usually are. Kira Austin's getting drawn further up down the court. Look at Molly Jovic here, keeping Kira Austin out of the circle. She has every player on that court defending her. As Austin, Suncorp, super shot attempt. She misses. Everything is falling the Magpies' way. There she is, Shani Lambton. Wing defences never get the attention they deserve. Unless you're doing something like that, you've really got to stand out. And the Vixens, very handy intercept for them. Austin, another attempt. Can't get it, and they can't get the rebound. Mentor. Magpies flying. Look at the intercepts. Lewis with two. Lambden adds one to the Vixens' tally. But the Magpies, they're showing you how it's all done. They take their lead out to nine. Just under two minutes to play in this third quarter. Joby. Sinclair straight to Nelson. I love the fact that the uh, Magpies feeders... Oh, hands to it. <laughs> Magpies feeders, they sight their shooters and they give it straight away. It's really impressive. We see Mentor just flip the side of Kumwenda's hand on the shot. Gets Kumwenda. another go at it. And what? Jody Ann Watt, huge rejection from Jody Ann Watt. And Landon comes in for another intercept. Ward, incredible play. Let's take a look at this. She waits, she times it perfectly and just grabs it out of the air. Pounces on that ball. Whoa, I'm not sure who Brazil was throwing that to, but it looked like it was us. Shani Lambden having a real impact in this last couple of minutes. How have you seen the matchup between Brazil and Watson? Physical. <laughs> and they yeah. both love it. <laughs> Lambden. She has no one to go to. Maloney gets the second chance. Watson is doing a huge amount of work. Finds Kumwenda on the baseline. She looks tired. She, well, I, I think it's just their whole defense end. The Magpies are not necessarily, you know, all beating their players individually. They're working together collectively, which is shutting down the Vixens' attack end. Weston smartly gets the hand in. They weren't expecting it, the Magpies' attack. It's a really great work from the Collingwood. Up they go to Nelson. Plenty of time. 15 seconds on the clock. Vixen set a pass. What can they do? Maloney, Richo's in the background, the Collingwood coach calling for them to get in that Suncorp super shot defence. Kukwenda doesn't have enough time. What a performance by the Magpies. They have won every single quarter in this game. They lead 
the, the Vixens by 10. It's three quarter time. We've got one more quarter to play. The Magpies are leading by 10. And on your screen before, Shani Lambden. She's debuting for the Vixens today, wing defense. And you could hear the passion in their voices. They want to get back in this, the Vixens. They definitely do. And Simone just asking more from her. She's picked up a couple of balls. But in terms of their game plan, wanting her to slow down that center pass, what a task ahead of her to slow down Kelsey Brown. Shani Norda, the Magpies, they must be happy. They are happy, very confident during that break and very clear and calm messaging. What they've been doing is asking Kelsey Brown to come out wide to allow Jovic to come through that middle channel and then Gabby Sinclair to open up that other side. What's that doing? When you have players across the whole court, it's really hard to defend because they're spread out so wide. And then defensively, they're just asking the players to stay off the body when they're running through on the intercept so they don't get called for contact. The Magpies. They start this quarter off exactly how they finished the last one. They extend their lead to 11. What can the Vixens do? Isn't that interesting? Both coaches asking their players to stay in play at this point of the game. Something we'll keep an eye on, because the penalty count, you know, we've spoken about it a lot, but when players are out of play, it just is an easy option, isn't it? And the, the pressure that builds across the game, obviously we saw, yeah, so we see 50 penalties to 52. That's a lot of penalties in by three-quarter time. Just lets the pressure off when you get that penalty. It's an easy play from, a, from a, what we call a broken play. And in the first half, defensively, you, you want to contest the ball. So you, you almost know that you're going to get penalised early. But then you hope in that second half of the game, that's when you can fly through and start getting some ball after all of that perseverance and that work you've done in the first half. But for the Vixens, that's not really what's happening. They're, they're really off the pace in defence. As we see, Emily Manick, she's now on at goalkeeper. Shani Norda called for the change. It's happened. We've seen a as Austin scores for the Vixens. So let's see what the Vixens defense can do. Now Maddox is back at keeper on Nelson. Brazzle, across to Brown, she's out wide. Ward fumbles and gathers. Brazzle goes long to Jovic. Landon, arms over to Brown. Nelson wants it, can she get it? Maddox. I getting thought up she, to the air I that thought, ball. I thought she had good footwork. She got herself around the back there and just watched that ball sail over the top. But just a little, applying a little bit of contact. Here we go. Contact. Maddox is saying, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to take you on. Austin just having to take the ball with body on her every single time. Obviously, we know that Rani Samerson isn't on the bench for the Vixens. That's got to be tiring for the goal attack. And if it's going to come down to shooting uh, super shots at the end, Samerson is one of the players that you would love to be able to have on court. Kawenda, strong take. That's been the strength of the Melbourne Vixens this season, is the strength that they have on the bench. Even with Hannah Bundy, with having Bundy out, they don't have an option to rotate through the midcourt. Sinclair all on her own. We see the two girls sitting on sitting on the bench. They do have that option. It's uh, it's not the experience, so, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is that experience. Brazzle to Brown. They're going cross court. They're going in the centre. The Magpies can that do what they like at the contact. moment. We have calls on the end. A causing call against Shani Lambden. Just trying to block Gabby Sinclair's entry into the circle. <laughs> Gabby Sinclair up and over. Watson, beautiful quick play from the Vixens. What we're used to seeing from them for majority of the game. That really quick first phase, the second phase, hitting Lizzie Watson on that second phase and the feed straight into the circle. I love this aerial shot that we've introduced on Fox Netball. It really gives you a great insight into the player movements as Brown and Jovi, and so Brown and Sinclair are happy to own the pocket. Vixens. Maloney to Austin, she fights and tussles with Ward to get the center pass. Yes. Landon, not a lot of movement from the Vixens attackers. A lot of just standing and waiting to make their move. 
footwork call, foot call against Austin. The Magpies, they seem in control. Brazzle, they don't want to go over the hands. They can't go forward, they've got to go sideways. Now's their opportunity. Brown points, collects, straight to Sinclair. They're quick. And a tip and chase from the Vixens. Just not going their way today, is it? Unlucky. Maddox got her hand to it. Weston couldn't gather it in time. What a fine performance. Have a look at this in the air. Maddox gets over it. Weston just out of court. Brown. The controller. What she want to do? She's going to the pocket, allowing Jovi that space. Nelson steps forward. Her 39th goal at 95%. Nelson, what a performance by her. Lambden to Watson. Back to Watson. Up they go. Can they do the same? Maloney, where's she going to go? Across to Watson. Austin, for one. Let's take a look at the Nissan net points, Katie. Kelsey Brown there, sitting on top with 93. Her and Jovic have just been running the show today. That really speedy, getting obviously a lot of handling with the ball. Give and goes, centre pass receives. As we see a little over the top from Sinclair. Kelsey Brown, 95.5 missing net points last week. Already attacked. at 93 this week. What a performance it has been by her. And Molly Jovic, she was in the Nesson Net Points Team of the Week. Centre contact. Where you are. As a centre, she had a great She's performance. And she's backing inside. that up here today. Magpies just continuing to disrupt. We see Jovic with the pickups there. We spoke about the importance of the pickups, didn't we, last week? As the Magpies, Kelsey Brown ran over to the umpire to call a HCF tactical timeout. Let's take a listen to what they have to say. I'm not sure what the delay is here on court, but there we go. Nicole Richardson is coming out to address her team. Let's take a listen to what she has to say. Okay. So, from, from an attacking perspective, just that short game, but still punch to come back up. So it's not all just straight across the court. We're doing fine. Nothing needs to change from an attacking perspective. We'll make sure there's still hands on here. The wide, middle, that side still working well for us, okay? And we just keep chipping away until something opens. Process on the shot. Yeah, just tidy it up, that's all. So just make sure first set of pass out of this timeout. Make sure you know what you're doing, yeah? Keep running your feet through the ball, yeah? I reckon you'll get one. Yeah. You're just yeah, running a little bit. Jody, feet through the ball, extra step. Let's go. Let's put the foot down. There you have it, the Magpies, they are ready to go and why shouldn't they be? They're already leading by 11 goals in this final quarter. It's a Crosstown Rivals, forget where teams are on the ladder. The Magpies, they were hanging down the bottom. They needed to win this to get into the top four. The Vixens wanted to win this to secure top spot. We've got over eight minutes to play in this last quarter. Anything can still happen, but the Magpies have to be happy. Shani Norda, what were the Vixens saying as the Brown takes an intercept? Simone just said, take it ball by ball. But to be honest with you, their energy was really flat. There's still eight minutes to go. They can still fight it out. And look, she asked her defenders to mix it up in the circle. I think from my point of view, they're just getting a bit caught on the body. So when that ball swings, and I know it moves quick, you've got to get your little feet around the body uh, and try and get in front to force that ball high. But look, they're just having a river game, especially Shimona and Nelson at the moment, and it can be pretty tough to stop. Their little feet get around the body. <laughs> You're right, though, the Vixens, the energy. We talk about you create your own luck, and at the moment the Magpies certainly are by the way they're playing, the way they attack the ball, and defensively, the way they're contesting. They definitely are. It's been an impressive 
three and a half quarters from the Magpies. Magpies have had two Run wins so far head. this season. They beat the Lightning here at home. They went away to Queensland last week and beat the Inform Firebirds. And now are well on their way to potentially their third win for the season. Sinclair to Jovic. Brazzle Center. will take the penalty. The Magpies sitting in a one-on-one, -on -one, leaving Sinclair across to Nelson. That connection, that goal -a goal -a connection. Dixons. Maloney into attack. Weston through the middle channel to Austin. They're sitting in the middle channel. What can they do? Kumwenda. Great shot there from Kumwenda. I wonder if this power five that is looming. Look at the Magpies sitting totally off that transverse line, allowing Brazel to be the centre pass receiver and then giving them numbers behind the ball. Safe and steady from Nelson. Maloney, Watson goes long. They have to go back to Lambda. Great backup from Lambda in her first game for the Melbourne Vixens. Maloney up to Kumwenda. Incredible take. Mentor, Austin to take the penalty. Mentor back in play. It's a 12 goal lead to the Collingwood Magpies. Just over five minutes to play. The power five, you'll hear the siren. And both teams, both teams can make it count. William Trouch on the edge, wing defence, with the wing outside, it's outside. You see Gabby Sinclair do a preliminary movement on the floor there <laughs> and ends up with the ball in her hands. Maddox comes through with the rebound. There's the siren. Power five is in play. Vixens are going to have to make their move. Body obstruction wing. Watson, what can she do? She finds Austin stumbling backwards. Not confident yet to take the super shot. For one. 34 goals at 89%. And that's a strategy that we've seen, isn't it, B? In terms of you get a game ball, you want to bank the one, and then you might have a go at the two on your, off your centre pass. Let's see if that's what they Watson, do here. Kwenda. Here she goes. <laughs> the crowd says the goal. A Suncorp super shot to Maui Kwenda. Sinclair to Brazel. The Magpies want one. Brown chases that up. They find Nelson. If in doubt, throw it in the air. <laughs> And it has been working for the Magpies all game. Contact centre. And a forced contact against Maloney. Ward getting the rewards for the pressure. Brazel to Brown to Sinclair. Great Nelson strong hands. in front. If you were Emily Maddox, would you be wanting to get around to that front position? I think the front position, I think she's been doing a good job of mixing it up. Um, so sometimes being in front is really, uh, really important. But if you get beaten by going over, over the back multiple times, um, moving it around yes. and potentially trying to force your player out might be a, a good strategy that she's trying to have a go at. Mannix can't get a hand to that one. Nixon. Nelson sitting on 81.5 missing net points. As we see Jackie Newton on at wing defence. Not a familiar position for Jackie Newton. She's usually in the circle. Kwenda, another attempt. Austin, can she do it? Good rebound, though. Obstruction dot offence, down here. Down here, players. Twinkle toes from Kwenda to keep that in the baseline. Stay out of play. Magpies. Kwenda just looking for the pathway to the two-point shot. They're going to keep attempting it, and so they should. They need to get themselves in position. They've got two and a half minutes to make up 12 goals. It's a lot, but it can be done. It is a lot. They need to have some strong movements. There we go. Austin on her own. Can she do it? 
There we go. There is one. Suncorp super shot from Kira Austin. That is a huge performance by her. That's five Suncorp super shots for Kira Austin. It's got to be tiring, isn't it? I reckon that's been a strategy of the Magpies today is to wear her body like anything. She's been under pressure every single take and then having to be the one that's taking those super shots. She must be super tired. And we saw last week Kira Austin with her intercept. She took three and she's really, she's taken one, but hasn't had the same defensive pressure that she had last week. Kumwenda, here she goes. Oh, Not just in there for her rebound. Great rebound and gives it back out to Austin. The penalty comes, she gets another shot. Austin for two. What a great performance by Kira Austin and in that su Suncorp super shot range. We just saw her asking the umpire. I think she's getting her hand tipped on the shot. Just asking yes. him just Kindly. to have a look. Why wouldn't you have a look at that? That's happening out there. Emily Manick sneaks around the front. Great footwork. But the Vixens can't utilize that turnover. Brown on her own, goes up. Up in the air, Nelson. That's the creative work from Brown, isn't it? Seeing the two defenders on, just looking at that ball. I might swing it to the pocket, creates a little bit of space. What's the ball to go in? Easily finds Kawenda. Suncorp, super shot for Kawenda. And the Vixens get back within eight. Brown on her own to Jovic. Just over 30 seconds to play. Jovic to Sinclair. They look up. Weston's that in the way. Newton. Sinclair. Magpie struggling to go forward. Contact wing, yes. Brown working wing hard to Sinclair. Can she do it? Yes. Magpies. They answer with two, and look at their coach, Nicole Richardson. She has a huge smile on her face, as does Ash Brazel. Taking a breather on the bench there. The Magpies, this means so much to be able to have bragging rights here in Melbourne. And they sure do have bragging rights. A 10 goal win for the Collingwood Magpies here against the Melbourne Vixens. The Melbourne crowd, they've been starved of this crosstown rival match and they've finally got it.